hello to everybody on YouTube and deep bow to your practice. I can't believe all these people have been subscribing and showing love on the videos. Yeah, right back at you. And I hope you're also accessing this profound approach to meditation and liberation because um, actually when you look around in Vajrayana, in the meditation world, even in Dzogchen, it's filled with jargon and weighed down by, uh, I hate to say it, ritualistic practices and proprietary, well, not proprietary language in the sense that it's inaccessible, but in a sense that it's proprietary to Vajrayana. And I think it's great to do those sadhanas and, and to really participate in all that profound tantric stuff. You know, I've been a part of that for since I was a child. But at the same time, when when do we start talking about Dzogchen? And, and actual just resting here in meditation, you see, and allowing your entire experience to be within the pure presence of your mind, to allow compassion to be boundless by just resting in your natural compassion, by recognizing all phenomena and all appearances to be compassion. All the teachers, all the teachings they don't want you to constantly worship gurus. They don't want, want you to constantly follow lamas around. They want you to liberate. All the authentic teachers and teachings want you to recognize the nature of mind and be free. I don't understand sometimes two hours of videos talking about how realized and amazing some guru is. Oh my God, I had this experience and that experience and then I visited him over here and and I it was the most magical. Da -da -da. No, we can have that right now. In, in a dilapidated mud hut with five dogs. Maybe your circumstances are a little bit more favorable even. But keep in mind, that's the goal of these teachings, is to share liberation. Uh, we don't need to fall in love and, and jump on guru bandwagons and do all this stuff. Awareness is your guru. Okay? And yeah, you need a guide to help you with that. But they're just pointing you to the true guru, you see? Which is the nature of your mind. And that's how I kind of uh, just describe all that because I've, I've gone decades in Vajrayana seeing people obsessing over teachers and and ritualistic practices and ooing and aahing over tantric rituals and and transmissions that are so rare and nobody gets to have this transmission only us and you know it's this whole like uh, groupy kind of vibe and and a vibe of inaccessibility but zokchen means that you can always have the retreat center the teacher you can always have the profundity and the sanctity you can always have it it's here now you see you can smell the incense of a retreat center right now you can feel the spaciousness of those practices and you don't need to be in the presence of a guru you know I, honestly i'm kind of tired of hearing that the presence of the guru the presence of the guru how about the presence of your mind what about that Nobody ever just tapped him on the shoulder. Hey, it's not the presence of the guru. It's the presence of your own mind. It's so easy to gather a bunch of followers and have a bunch of people. Eh, that's bullcrap. All right. 
So anyway, I, I don't know why I opened up this particular session like this, just sharing what's on my heart, I suppose. And perhaps inviting you to just really come into the, the true liberation of your own mind, okay? So I'll start reading here again from the way of, uh, excuse me, the, the basic space of phenomena. Dharma Datu, referring to this wonderful spacious mind of ours and how all sensory appearances are kind of manifesting from that. That's the proposition that all you yogis and awareness holders out there, you can test for that. You see, and is it multi-layered the way it is in my dream where I'm creating a environment, I'm creating a character, I'm creating interactions. Is it like that? Where do my memories reside? You know, all these things. Who's, which cognizance is beating my heart? Is there a correlation between the clouds moving and the rain uh, dropping and my mind? Yeah, we can, as yogis, we can find this. Or introspective scientists, you choose uh, your title, okay? All right, so I'll read here. Please relax if you're not already relaxed and listen to some long chimpa. Within mind itself, the essence of awakened mind, there is no view to cultivate a meditation, no conduct to undertake, no fruition to achieve, no levels of realization or paths to traverse, no mandala to visualize, no recitation, repetition, or stage of completion, no empowerment to be bestowed, and no samaya to uphold. In the pure state that is the true nature of phenomena, timelessly and spontaneously present, such adventitious factors of developmental effort and causality are transcended. The essence of these factors is awakened mind, unobscured by clouds or darkness. The sun shines in the sky by its very nature, not as something adventitious. Any teachings concerning the ten attributes that involve effort and achievement is given in response to the confusion that occurs adventitiously due to the dynamic energy of awareness. It is a skillful means for engaging those whose acumen requires development through effort. It is not given to yogins who genuinely experience the ultimate meaning of the heart essence. Ati Yoga. So here is one of the reasons why um, I actually follow Long Chimpa's advice and present Ati Yoga bare bones to those who sincerely want it. Um, I feel like these are the yogis that are ready for it and, and would like it or have some significant connection with it. So for, for those of you, uh, Long Chimpa has said many places actually throughout his presentations that all you practitioners should be dealing with the awareness practice. As we saw earlier, Vajra Heart Essence is synonymous with awareness. And um, I feel like throughout my life, I've seen a lot of people who are totally ready for the awareness practice and they just never got it. And it's like somebody who wants water who, who never got it. To me, it's even more intense than that, actually. I, I get very kind of righteous hearted when I see Dharma practitioners who have never heard of Atiyoga. Yoga. I feel like, wow, they, I wish I could give it to them. That's the true key to freedom there. So I'll continue reading. So the individuals who exert themselves in order to progress developmentally may be led to primordial basic space, the true nature of phenomenon. There's the spiritual approaches of the Shrivaka, the Pratyeka Buddha, and the Bodhisattva. 
These are the stages demonstrated on the three lesser levels. The three divisions of Kriya, Upa, and Yoga are by their very nature the three intermediate levels. The three divisions of Maha, Anu, and Ati manifest primordially as the three higher levels. By opening the doorway that leads beyond other approaches based on causes or results, they guide fortunate beings to three levels of enlightenment. The culmination of all these, moreover, is found in the ultimate meaning of the heart essence. They must lead towards this superb, supreme secret, and so utterly lucidity, sublimely unchanging, is the pinnacle of them all. This is renowned as the spiritual approach of the heart essence of manifest enlightenment. Furthermore, of the two alternatives within spiritual teaching, one involves, excuse me, one involves a concerted effort to accept or reject. It is taught in order to refine away the habitual patterns of ordinary mind and mental events whose nature it is to arise as a display due to dynamic energy. This approach holds that timeless awareness is purer than ordinary mind. The supreme teaching involves no concerted effort to accept or reject. Naturally occurring timeless awareness, the essence of awakened mind itself is made fully evident in that one does not waver from the direct experience of it. So there is no need to strive for it elsewhere. It rests in and of itself, so do not seek for it elf elsewhere. <clears throat> this, the ultimate meaning of suchness itself, is like the essence of the sun. I hold that it abides as a natural state of rest, unwavering, utter lucidity. It can be shown that other approaches are like attempts to create the already present sun by dispelling clouds and darkness through a process of effort and achievement. Therefore, these two kinds of approach are as different as heaven and earth. I feel like something happened there in the presentation, but basically he's contrasting between effort-based approaches and effortless abiding. So nowadays, those elephants who pride themselves on being Ati practitioners allege that thought patterns stirring and proliferating are awakened mind. All of these fools are submerged in darkness, far from the meaning of natural great perfection. They do not understand even dynamic energy or what arises from that energy to say nothing of the essence of awakened mind. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a jab there at the people that are just approaching Ati purely conceptually. So you see a, a lot of that. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, uh, the main issue is that it seems to be like this transitory period where people are coming from things like Lam Rim and Shedra, all this intense study and perhaps even philosophical backgrounds and the monastic curriculums. So they're coming from that and they're trying to apply this analytical mind to something that kind of supersedes the, the analysis, it serves as the basis for all analysis. So you, you can't apply analysis to the very thing that serves as the basis for analysis. Understand? And um, so understandably, uh, it, it's kind of foolish, isn't it, to, to even try. It seems like a waste of energy and ends up becoming uh, quite dangerous to, to oneself and, and others because we must, we insist that Dzogchen is like this and we establish this conceptual framework of how Dzogchen must be. And through that conceptual framework, we develop a pro proprietary kind of insulated world where if people don't get these concepts right, they're not practicing Ati Yoga, you know? <laughs> uh, what I've learned throughout my days, uh, uh, one of the things anyway, is that somebody could be talking about Ati Yoga in a whole different language. 
using totally different words. And it's very important, like Buddha Shakyamuni and many others have said, to look at the underlying meaning there uh, of that uh, sort of uh, linguistical presentation, linguistic presentation. Yeah. So, in this discussion of mind, primordially pure, awakened mind is ultimate truth. The true nature of phenomenon as basic space beyond description or imagination it is the perfection of sublime knowing okay we can uh, keep it there what page is that now thank you so much uh, everybody for listening and, uh, w which page are we on by the way Okay, 40. All right, we'll remember that for the basic space of phenomenon reading. Yeah, so I hope you're able to hang out a little bit and enjoy for that. Thank you so much, Yeshi, for scrolling through the text and keeping that going. It's wonderful to see the people benefiting on YouTube and diving into this stuff as well. And for extended mandala of practitioners there. 